Hi, I'm Eric, and we're in my kitchen today, and we're going to do a demonstration on my number 12 Blues Master. This is my good friend Jim Bates here on the number 12 Blues Master. This is my good buddy Tim Ramberg on the bass. This bass here is something I did about 10, 12 years ago. It's a Warmoth bass with a, a genuine Fender jazz neck, replacement jazz neck. One, a two, a one, two, three. Yeah, that's a wrap, Daddy O. What we're going to talk about here today is these two Blues Masters that I've uh, built. Um, this first one here, uh, I had the fortune, good fortune, back in January this year, going to the NAMM show because of Jim. Called me up and said, hey, I got a spare ticket to NAMM show. You want to go? I was like, heck yeah, let's go. So we you went. And on a Sunday, the very last day of the show, we were downstairs and had the very good fortune of finding this piece of Sapele. It was a body blank. And I said, I know exactly what I'm going to do with this, Jim. I'm going to build this new guitar that I've been working on for a while since last summer. And I didn't even have a name for it yet, but it's now called the Blues Master. Um, so that's how this whole thing came about. This is the prototype. I brought it to one of Jim's gigs one night and uh, 
I said, Jim, just try this out. Just see what you think of it, you know? I had no intentions of him purchasing the guitar or anything, but he didn't put it down all night. I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> he's gonna buy it, I think. So next thing you know, he's like, I had a hardtail bridge on it, didn't have the tremolo. So next thing you know, he's like, well, I love everything about the guitar, but can you put a tremolo on it? So I said, you bet. So the very next day, I took it all apart. He came over, paid me for the guitar, and I put a Fender American Standard Strat tremolo on it, which he likes a lot, so. And there you go, now he's happy as a clam. So Jim, tell us what prompted you to really fall in love with this guitar. Um, we've been discussing off and on over the course of years, possibly building a guitar. I built this one just for fun, and then I brought it to the gig, and you sent them to buy it. Well, you've, every guitar you've built has been a masterpiece, and they all have. I mean, they're beautiful, they're well-crafted, and you use only quality parts. That's obvious. When from a guitar player standpoint, when you pick up a guitar, and you can pick up several strats in a music store, but there's always one that just feels right. And you told me you crafted this after a Fender neck, and as soon as I picked it up, I said, this feels like a Stratocaster neck to me. Mm -hmm. Yet, it's got this heavy weighted uh, African Sapelli wood that gives it more of a Gibson kind of resonance to mm -hmm. it. Like it vibe, the harder the, the wood, I think, the more it resonates. So I, I already have the Strat, and I needed that kind of um, Gibson sound. Mm -hmm. And with keeping my Strat neck, this was like a perfect fit for me. And obviously this is just very well built, this neck. It's got all the, wood. the comfort contours for you. The contours right? were right. It's yeah, just, yeah. it's way, It's a little weightier than a strap, but not, not bad. I mean, yeah, it feels good. Solid. But it sort of uh, gives it, the notes resonate harder. It just, right. just a, it got that crunchier sound when you were doing those types of songs and that thing. So, right. and, and of course, I had my landing bar. So I, yeah. I really, it starts with the neck. For sure. That's the main tool. Guitar, that's yeah. like, that's it. Yeah. Sound, of course, you've got, Excellent pickups and just the craftsmanship in general is just, I fell in love. As soon as I picked it up, first note, I know that's it. I just knew it. Just I'm knew sold. It. <laughs> yeah. Why, well, thank you very much. No problem. Excellent guitar. Thank you. And we had the good fortune when we were at the NAM show, just before we were going in on Sunday morning, we ran into uh, Paul Reed Smith, obviously the one of the greatest guitar builders in the world. And we went up to him and asked him if we could take his picture and talk to him. Eric told him he was a guitar builder and showed him some pictures of his guitars and Paul Reed Smith was actually duly impressed. He was looking through the iPhone, yeah, that's very nice, but he goes, I got a question for you. Do you build your own necks? And Eric said, well, yeah, I surely do. He goes, that's the sign of a good guitar builder if you build your own necks. And that really is the key to this whole thing. The neck, it starts at the neck and you're building some really, really good necks and these guitars are actually phenomenal. Thanks. And that comes to another point. I own this guitar, and this is a blues master, and that's your second blues master. What is actually the difference from a guitar builder standpoint between these two guitars? Obviously, they look different. Aesthetically, they're different. But what's from the, from the builder standpoint is different? Well, the tone woods are completely two different worlds, and they come from two different parts of the world. Uh, this is a, a, a Sapele from West Africa. This is more close to a mahogany. You get a more warm sound. It's, it's very dense wood, like mahogany. This is made of alder, which is up in the Pacific Northwest of Northern America. Uh, both necks are maple. Uh, tuners are the same. They both have rosewood fingerboards. You're gonna get it, like I said, you're gonna get a little bit darker, warmer tone probably out of that, that one. This one is more, it's a kind of a mid, mid rangey tone, kind of a, it's not, not real bright. If you were to build like something out of maple, you're gonna get a real bright tone. Warm, kind of medium. You can play probably any kind of pickups through this. This one here, you have to be very selective of what kind of pickups you're gonna put in. That's why I changed that pickup out. I didn't like the first one, so. Just from playing both guitars here today even, I noticed that that one seems more, it seems better for like blues or say, say the quieter blues or jazz even. Well, this wants to scream and holler a lot more. I think that P-Rail pickup likes to scream and holler. Now actually, I did put a 
a uh, Duncan uh, hot rail in here just last night. I changed this out from a little 59 to a hot rail. So this is actually a little hot rod pickup. It will scream if you want it to. But this is a full size humbucker. This is like a quarter size. So it, it, there is a tonal difference in it. It does get loud, but not as fat. Yeah. That's definitely fatter. Uh, this is what a Duncan 59, nice fat old school blues tone. So there you go. Speaking of fat, Speaking of fat, look at there. There's Oz. <laughs> yeah, he just come around to see what we're doing. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. I'd like to thank my good buddy here, Jim Beach. He's number 11 Blues Master. Coming out and playing for us today. Testing both these beauties out. Stay tuned on the next build. It's going to be the number 13. Lucky number 13. It's going to be like an old rat rod. Flat black paint, simple, pinstripes. You name it, it's gonna scream 50s. It's gonna be badass. Stay tuned, everybody. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Eric's Guitar Garage. Ciao.